Hooking your kids into learning. <laughs> Welcome to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck. Welcome to the channel if you're new here and if you're one of my regular followers. Thank you so much for the support. I can't believe how many subscribers I've got now. Let's just keep going. If you are new though, you can follow me on Twitter, Pinterest, uh, Facebook group, uh, Instagram. It's all free. No spamming, no selling, no nothing. Just me sharing. Sharing my stuff, sharing things from other schools as well. So today I'm actually probably going to be sharing more about other schools than anything else that I've been doing. I want to talk about what it means to hook your kids into learning, what learning hooks are or lesson hooks, and some examples that I've used. I'm going to show you some examples that other teachers have used, some really, really cool ones. Easy ones, over the top ones, extravagant ones, uh, ones that require things and ones that don't require anything at all as well and at the end if you're still here with us I would love for you to pop into the comments some of the things that you've done as well to hook your kids into learning so I've got my trusty notebook with a few notes on there and then we'll flip over to some examples of great learning hooks so I'll just get myself comfy there <laughs> when we're talking about these learning hooks we're talking about things that engage your kids into learning but think of it when you go fishing and I do like fishing I don't get to do it often enough my hubby likes it but because we've got a toddler, it's really hard to sort of, we'll do anything, um, but it's hard to go fishing with a toddler running around. So we don't do it all that much at the moment. Hopefully we'll do it more as he grows older and our kids are keen to do it too. But anyway, when you go fishing and you're, you're, you know, you've got the hook going out there, there are still fish sort of hovering around, looking at the hook and the bait that's on there. And it depends on the bait that you've got on there, whether or not they're going to bite. The difference being, you know, when they bite, are they going to hold on or are they just, you know, having a taste and then going away? Same is with our kids. You know, sometimes we can dangle the hook in front of them, the bait in front of them, the carrot, if you will, uh, in, into what we're doing. But do they actually want to jump onto it and stick with it? Do they want to risk putting themselves out there to engage in the learning opportunity that you're providing with them? Is that bait tasty enough? So, and there are some ways that will work across the board with this. So things that I'm going to show you today could work across any KLA, any grade as well, which is the best part. This is so easy to use in any classroom. So it can be big, it can be small. This doesn't require you to go over the top for every lesson or every unit you're ever going to teach. Some of these, these things work consistently across the board. Um, so it could initiate one particular lesson or it could initiate a whole unit of study. study. Your hook, your bait, might be at the beginning of the term and will carry through throughout the rest of that unit of study depending on how long it is or it could just be to get kids into that particular lesson for that 45 minute to hour period of the day um, and it's not just about getting their attention you know we can get kids attention easily enough some ways um, but it's about making enough of a connection with them that they want to engage with it you know moving from on task to in task um, you know we want them to take that bait but stick with it you know we've reeled that fish in normally we well, we do what we need to do when we need to kill a fish. <laughs> um, we're not doing that with our kids. Um, this means, though, it comes down to knowing your kids really, really well. So uh, in some cases, it's going to be very much targeted to your class. It may not work with another class. It you know, d depends on the kids that you've got, the interests at the time, and the relevance of what you're doing. So marbles. Marbles come in and out of fashion, I don't know, every five years or so. Yo-yos too. About every five years, yo-yos will make a comeback. So in between that period where it's popular, yo-yos might not be part of your learning hook at that time. I would be using it right now though at my school because, you know, we just did a yo-yo thing, so there's yo-yos everywhere again. Handball at the moment is also quite popular. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be a fun thing as well. Um, if I can introduce you to my Coochie Kobe. Um, oh, just knocking things there. If you've ever watched Bob's Burgers, I love Bob's Burgers. It's one of my favorite shows to watch. This is the um, toy. It's a nightlight for one of the characters in the show. And hubby saw it in Zing. Was it Zing? Uh, and went and got it for me. Uh, and it does glow in the dark, this one. I love it. It's just so cute and I love the attachment that the girl has to it in the show as well. There's all sorts of layers to why I love this thing. But I mean, if you stick that on anything, I want it. That doesn't mean that it's fun. I'm not doing anything with it. I just love it. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of our kids are um, attached to those things as well. And I'm, I'm going to go through a list of things that consistently a lot of kids do like at the moment. Um, well, you know what? Some of them like them for decades as well. So um, for me, the easiest way 
to hook kids into learning doesn't even require a toy uh, and doesn't require a theme. I say to them, today I'm going to try and trick you. Let's see who can get tricked. That's it. They all suddenly pay attention thinking, she's not going to trick me. I, I don't even care what this is. She's not going to trick me. I'm going to do this really, really well. <laughs> and that works for anything, regardless of what I'm doing. As long as I say to them, I'm trying to trick you today, they suddenly start paying attention because they don't want to be tricked. They think they can get the better of me. Um, there's also lots of easy hooks that you can use in the classroom. And, and this comes down to, you know, you're using props, using costumes, uh, playing games, using a particular video, uh, using artifacts or changing the setting, getting out of the classroom and going into a different setting and, you know, saying that you're going to be something, you know, going to the sandpit and saying, we're going to be archaeologists today. We're going to be, um, investigators today. Those things automatically are going to get them going. We're doing something different. I want to participate in this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the camera around and I've created another Google folder for you guys. It has um, some PDFs, some photos, uh, and a couple of activities as well that are really, really cool. So the first thing I'm going to show you though is examples of learning hooks with teachers and with students that I think are really cool. I'm just filming on the surface. I've made this a uh, Word document called Learning Hooks. And I've saved this into the Google Drive, which I'll show you as well. But this is a teacher who has dressed up, quite obviously, as an astronaut for their lesson for the day. And, you know, you can see the kids engaged and learning, and it just looks fun. This lesson could have easily been done without the costume, but it's going to make more of an impact and be more memorable just because of the costume. And it looks really cool too. This is a high school history teacher getting their kids interested in learning. That must have been uncomfortable to wear. I hope he wore that all day long. And you know what? I kind of actually hope he made it himself. That would be even cooler. So this is called a live wax museum. And can you imagine telling the kids at the beginning of this unit of study, you guys are going to be in a live wax museum. You're going to stand there and be a statue. And you could show them what a wax museum looks like. But this would be them studying uh, you know, important figures throughout history. And so there's some examples here, you know, this is Neil Armstrong. Again, just being dressed up and being able to engage in what in your learning over there. And, you know, you can see the work that he, he put into that um, through the unit. I love this Audrey Hepburn. Doesn't she look gorgeous? And there's her little stand there. And then, you know, those kids that get to come along and engage and look at this, how cool does it look to actually have that person pretending to stand still and be the the wax model? Muhammad Ali. And ugh, just the pictures behind it look good. Like, you can tell a lot of effort went into it. He's really into character. Just so engaging. I love this. I wish I could do this in primary school, but there's no chance of it. Uh, just, you know, let's set something on fire to get the kids learning today. Let's stand on the bench to do it today. You know, this could have been done with a video in his jeans and t-shirt sitting at the table. But no, he's done it himself in the science coat, in the lab coat, in the lab. The kids would have felt the flames. I'm sure there would have been a really big risk assessment that went into this. However, that looks definitely looks like part of the curriculum to me. So I'm loving it. How cool is this? Now you can buy these online. You can buy all sorts of ones. Like there's ones with maths formulas all over it. There's skeletons, but this, um, I'm sure this one is, is muscles and I, you can get ones that have the nervous system on them as well. You know, this, and she's standing on the table. She's showing them like, can you imagine her walking around the school like that all day long? The, the kids just would have remembered that for years to come. Remember that day that she wore that weird suit with all the muscles on it? And, you know, just get them to pay attention. And they could have come up and pointed out things on there, or at least when they've done their diagram, she's standing in the room to refer to if they're not sure where something goes. This is one of my favorite things ever. It's the crime scene investigation. So just by getting some of that tape, which you can get at Bunnings, I think has it. Um, and, you know, putting some waterproof, what do you call it? A water-based paint on the floor, a broken chair, make a mess and then the kids have got to investigate what happened or who did it and why and I'm and look at them already looking there on the side and they're not allowed in they're not allowed to touch they've got to remain behind the boundary and this could go with anything this could be a writing prompt this could be a research prompt this could be writing um, an information report about something it could be about writing a recount there's so many ways that you could use this this 
is the cutest ever. So if you look, I'm going to try and zoom into it. Sorry. It's the cookie jar and the cookies. And they've got to figure out who stole the cookies from the cookie jar. And look at them. All sitting there. We've got the caution tape. Like, really, what would have this taken to, like, to set up? Get the caution tape. Smash up a couple of cookies. Print out a couple of feet. And chuck some things around it. And then they can, you know, engage from that. Tie this into your music with singing the song. Again, tie this into writing. For those littlies, I would be tying it into a description. You know, describe what it looks like. That, you know, talking and listening that goes into it. Now, this is one from the school that my kids attend. Um, this isn't their class, but I saw them share it. And this is Campfire Stories. So, you know, they're telling stories. They've got cushions and sleeping bags. And if you can see, there's sticks there in the middle. And that's... um. It's a salt lamp, like one of those Himalayan salt lamps. And you can see it's plugged in. So, you know, they don't actually have flames and stuff in here. It's plugged in. And they were joined by the principal and the director. And these guys are amazing too. I actually know them. And seeing them in the classroom like that, learning with the kids like that. Look, they've even got a campfire going in the background. It's so cute. And then they have... Now, I don't know if these were real marshmallows or not, but they've got them and they're toasting them around the salt lamp and you know just just having the lights down and oops making it different just looks so cool it's a bit hard to see on that one what else have I got here's our costumes you know getting some high-vis vests some binoculars and a hard hat a two dollar hard hat a couple of cheapo high-vis vests and you can keep them in the costume storeroom at school um, or even your science room or whatever and you know you get them out whenever the kids are doing something related to it just a costume that's all it is nice and easy these are the mad scientists kids love it when they stick on a lab coat put on some goggles and do something messy it's so easy to get them into a different mindset when they're wearing these outfits and there's actual research behind it that says that doing things like that makes an impact on their learning <laughs> there's a teacher dressed as Darth Vader we like Star Wars in our house so that's pretty cool uh, oh that's all I've got on that one I do have another document though oh where is it here we go so this is saved in the Google Drive as well and this is just an example of, of where you're going to put your learning hook in terms of your programming so in here that engage section there engage students at the beginning of a lesson by inserting a video image quote another inspirational hook in here so that's where your hook goes that's the engage part and, you know, this is just a bit of a lesson um, template that you can use to um, create that lesson plan. But, I mean, that's just an example for you there. Um, this picture is also saved in there. This you will find from um, Teach Like a Pirate, so Dave Burgess, which, you know, if you if you haven't seen him, go follow him on Twitter, look at it, get his book, order his book, read his book. Um, this is kind of like uh, your go-to for ideas. So, like, you can see here, for example, it says the costume hook props um that's you know what we're just talking about um i'm trying to think of other ones here that i've already spoken about uh there's the mystery bag there's the picasso hook so doing something artistic um the teaser hook so me telling the kids i'm going to trick you today um we've got the message board the people prop life-changing lessons we've got boom up there that fire that we're looking at in the science lab so this is a good one to go to if you're stuck for ideas um, have a look at this and think, oh, you know what? I haven't done that with my kids. That might be a possible way to, you know, hook them into their learning. This is an example for, you know, hooking your readers in. Um, there's questions you can pose. There's exclama excla blah, blah, blah. <laughs> exclamations you can use, you know, inserting onomatopoeia into it um, or coming up with really amazing facts. Kids love hearing facts about animals, about cities, things that are in the Guinness World Book of Records. Those are the things that win kids over. And this one's a bit of a planner, similar things. For me, I love using humor. Um, I also love using action, getting out and doing something. And this vivid sensory stuff really ties in well with a lot of our um, learners that have difficulty with um, comprehending exactly what it is that we're doing. So um, utilizing that is very beneficial. Now, getting into this, I've got some examples here of chatterboxes. Oh, I really should stop zooming in like that. So... Um, <laughs> it's horrible. Um, in America, they call these, oh, they're called cootie, cootie catches or something. Or we call them chatterboxes here. This is the thing that you fold up and then, you know, you use your fingers to put this inside and you pick different things. So you cut the square out and you fold along these lines and it makes sort of the pinchy box. Um, and then 
you go, you go through the numbers or whatever, and then um, you've got to answer the questions or do what it says in there. Just adding this to a lesson is a great way to engage kids because they get to use their hands. It's random. Um, they Some of them feel like it's in a bit of their control, but really it's kind of not. Um, so, you know, there's some random ones there. Uh, this is an example for music. So, you know, how you're actually going to play your instrument depends on what you land on on the chatterbox. So you could be at walking speed or running speed or very slowly with your music. Um, this is an example on how you might, uh, you know, do something. Explain your thing, whatever it is you're learning about, using a comic strip or explain it the way would you tell your grandmother. So, you know, if, if you were talking about um, some kind of uh, procedure on how to use an Xbox, how would you explain it to your gran? <laughs> how would you do it on a comic strip? And this is this this takes 30 seconds, but, you know, they get to play with something and, and see what they come up with. And I've got a blank template there for you too, but I want to show you a website... I see what I say. It's called Cootie Catcher in America. This is all about, um, he, here's the website here, sorry, um, multiplication.com. Oh God, there's the Cootie Catcher things that are on there. I think it's printed out. Oh, here we go. Multiplication.com. So if you go there, they've got these Cootie Catcher resources. They're all multiplication um, tables. Uh, but then when you open it up, you get a fact. So um, when you reach the answer, you know, four times eight is 32. The adult mouth has 32 teeth. So they get a fact to go with it. It helps them remember that answer. Uh, 8 times 8 is 64. There are 64 squares on a chessboard. And you go around, um, and there's there are tons of these sheets, tons of them for all the different multiplication tables um, so that you can practice them and then get an interesting fact out of it. And you know what? The kids could go away and research other things that have 64 or other things where the answer would be 64 um, as well. These ones are really good. And it's just because, you know, they get to use their hands. So um, this is the Google Drive here. It's called Learning Hooks. Um, I've saved all those things in there for you. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to that uh, multiplication thing. But there are some, whoops, there are some PDFs here too um, that have more ideas for lesson hooks. I'm just trying to open one up. So, you know, there's things on here, show and tell, story, analog, prop, media, status. Um, so they're just examples that are on there as well. So those are some really cool examples from other teachers and things that have been done different parts of the world that we can easily utilize in our classrooms for any grades really. Perhaps not setting fire to things though in the primary classroom that one might be a bit more difficult. Uh, I, I love the crime scene investigation ones. Um, I've never done an escape room yet. I really want to learn how to do an escape room. I've seen schools do it with kids and schools do it with teachers as well for professional development. So that's something I'm really keen to do. Something that we're doing at my school at the moment is a fairy tale ball. Our stage one have been uh, doing fairy tales as a thematic unit uh, tied into reading and writing and music and dancing. And they've been doing some great stuff. And we're having a fairy tale ball really soon that I'm excited about. And the kids are excited about it. And it got to the point where the staff were all so excited across the school that everyone's asking if they can go, even though they don't teach that stage, they want to participate. That's engagement. That's teacher engagement as well. That's really, really inclusive and inspiring to see. Um, something that I did, and I've done a video on this, is I used uh, gamification uh, in writing. So my kids were very reluctant writers, so I taught them how to play a very modified version of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it's a role-playing game. It's got dragons in it. Just saying dragons is enticing enough. Wizards and um, orcs and, uh, you know, fighters and ninjas and all sorts of things. That's enough to engage them to go, I want to do writing. We didn't actually play all that often. They didn't know that. They thought they were playing all the time because they were writing their stories. They were writing their narratives and character descriptions. Using comics and graphic novels. If you, if you want to do a narrative or, or um, in anything along those lines, Stick them in the comic grids and they want to draw and write straight away. And then you can lead that into more descriptive writing, paragraphs, etc. You know, down the track, you're hooking them in first and then getting them to where you want them to go. Um, creating something. You know, if, if it's anything where you can create something and that's what you're working towards and you're going to tell them at the start that they're going to create something, they'll want to be part of that. Creating a garden. We're creating a farm at the moment, um, creating a play space, creating a design, creating a wall, creating a mural, anything where they get to create and be part of that. Kids love 
um, you know, demonstrating something. So the science experiment I just showed you, um, you know, being able to demonstrate something yourself instead of just telling them that they're going to do something later and guess what, you learn something along the way, demonstrate it. Um, making things, having a makerspace all kids love, using Lego they all love, but breaking things is so much more fun and I'm going to be doing that with stage three soon, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, but being able to break something apart and seeing what's inside it and how it works. Um, and like I said, that doesn't have to be the main part. That can be the hook or it could be the main part. Telling them they get to break something, that's the hook. <laughs> um, having a visitor come in. My grandfather came and visited um, my year two class, my first class ever, and I did share it. Uh, I can't remember if it was Insta or Facebook or both. I shared the picture of myself in the classroom with my grandfather sitting on the chair and it was tied in with workers in the community. And my grandfather had had so many jobs in his entire life. I picked him up from where he lived on the central coast so that he would come back for the weekend and then come visit my class on the Monday. And the entire two and a half to almost three hour trip back, I, on the way I said, so tell me what you're going to tell the kids, you know, tell me the jobs that you had. I knew some of them. I didn't know all of them. He told me all of them and it took the entire drive for him to tell me every job he'd ever had. And you know, he's my grandfather. So he's an older guy, older generation, very serious man. We called him grandfather, no nicknames. He was grandfather. Love him to death though. Um, and the kids just loved it. They just loved sitting there listening to him talk about all these different jobs that he'd have throughout history. And there was just so much information there. Just having someone different telling it made a difference. Uh, we spoke about costumes, jackets, goggles, hats. The simplest thing like a hat can make a difference. Um, turn back time. Go with share. Turn back time and go back to some old things. Talk about things that you had when you were a kid. Show them pictures of things that you did when you were a kid if you're happy and comfortable to do that. Kids love to know what happened before and in that background. Old technology, old books that still have your name on it from when you were a kid, which I have in my class. Well, when I have a classroom, I have that in my classroom. It still says my maiden name in it um, because it's that old. It's got my handwriting from when I was a kid um, in there and uh, you know my class that I was in at the time as well and the kids always say is this yours from when you were little? Yeah I read it heaps of times when I was your age. Oh and I'm gonna sit there and read it just because. Old atlases. Wow the big gigantic Reader's Digest ones just because it's big gigantic and old they want to have a look at the atlas. Um old tools and stuff work well too if you can take tools in. Uh, I mentioned Lego, robotics, coding, STEM, all of those things where kids get to do something hands-on and cool is going to get them in. Um, using a microphone. I've got a teacher who has a speaker and a microphone in his classroom for the kids to recite their poetry and do some wrap-offs. Just having a microphone makes a difference because it's different. Um, I spoke about the chatterbox. Um, just making that personal connection between, you know, students, parents, teachers, sorry, bring, bring parents in as well. Um, using the green screen. If you've got it in your school, if you don't have it, you can get portable ones. I highly recommend just painting up a green wall and using it though. Um, and I said using humor as well. There's a great YouTube channel called Kids Snippets. It's where kids um, recite a scenario and then they get adults to actually act it out on the video. Hilarious. Um, kids love it though. So some basic themes that I've found used across the board regardless of grade or subject, keeping in mind in primary it may not work in secondary but hey who knows. Um, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs win hands down every time. Girls, boys, doesn't matter. Dinosaurs. Do you know why? Because dinosaurs are cool. Um, ninjas. Ninjas are great. They're just great. Everyone loves ninjas. Pirates are the best. We just did a pirate theme for um, book week. So a good chunk of our teachers came as pirates as did kids and one of the activities for maths I created that week was using a map and a Cartesian plane over the top of it, a map of the school sorry, and a transparent copy of a Cartesian plane over the top of it to try and hide all the treasures that we have in the school because pirates have come to overrun the school. Us teachers being the pirates that are overrunning the school. They had to decide though what treasures they needed to hide. So I picked a few things. People are always borrowing my keys because I'm an exec and I have certain keys throughout the school. So that was one of the treasures. 
Um, there was also the microphone from the classroom from the one that I just mentioned before. That microphone is a treasure so it needs to be stored. I told them that there was a golden egg from one of our chickens <laughs> that we haven't told them about yet that needed to be hidden. So then they started asking that teacher, where's this golden egg? Why haven't you told us about a golden egg? Um, and then, then hey, they had to create other ones as well. So um, I'm trying to remember now, there were some really good ones like the sports shed key you know, that's a treasure. We definitely need to hide that one. The remote control for the air con actually, because for whatever reason, like three of our remotes have gone missing. So there's one for my entire stage to share at the moment. So that is a treasure that needed to be hidden from the pirates. Cause if they took that, then we would have no remote control whatsoever. Um, so it was good to see the, the kids tie in with that. But just because I said pirates are coming and you need to hide the treasure, they engaged in that lesson, that whole lesson, right through to the very end where they had to think of extra things to put in there. So they inserted little icons onto the map to show what the item was, and then they had to write down all of the coordinates that went with it so that later on we could go back and dig up all the treasures. Um, superheroes. Superheroes, need I say more? Superheroes are great. Marvel at the moment, you've got Avengers, you've got um, Justice League, all those characters from DC and Marvel will win every time with girls, with boys, with kindy, with year six. I kid you not, they're awesome. Um, and always zombies, zombies. You've heard me say it before. That's why we learn to write really well because if the zombie apocalypse, apocalypse came, we need to know how to write clearly with people. So those are some uh, ideas and themes and everything that I think work really well. Like I said, big, small, verbal, props, anything like that. You should not ever ever aim to do this for every single lesson or unit you ever do. These are for the things that you think you might need to create a bridge between yourself and the kids in, their, in terms of engaging them in their learning. And you know what? Sometimes it's fun for the teacher to, to do these things because you should be having fun in the classroom as well as your kids. Everyone should be engaged. These are the things that make you think, you know what? We can do something different. There's no boundary there that exists that I can't put science coats on all of my kids other than money. Um, but you know what? I can try something. I can try anything, even if it means putting disposable gloves on them and telling them they're an investigator for the day. Something as simple as that can work. And you know what? If you work collaboratively with your team as well, these are things that can be shared. You can share these resources. You can do them together. You can team teach and, you know, build those ideas together too. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. If you've got something else that you think is a wonderful learning hook, please pop it in the comments below. If this was beneficial for you, click like on the video. It's always good to get the feedback and share with anyone you think might uh, benefit from this. Again, all my links and everything are in the description below. I'm going to pop my subscription button down here though. So if you haven't clicked on that, you just hover over it to subscribe and I'll pop, you know what? I'll put my D&D &D video at the top there for you guys so you can see how I incorporated Dungeons and Dragons into writing. Thanks guys. Bye.